And you made me feel so comfortable. Mm. You did. So it was, it, was, it, was, it was nice. You know what Nora did? She, she did sort of a, what she called a costume test, but it was really sort of introducing us to our world. She, mm -hmm. she took us up to the, um, the rooms which they'd built in a, um, the Paris hotel. I mean, the Paris apartment that she um, built in Queens or mm -hmm. wherever we were, mm -hmm. and let us walk around in our clothes. And it's sort of, you know, it, in isolation in your Winnebago or whatever it is, you, you kind of have a hard time convincing yourself you are who you say you are. But when you walk into this world and the light comes in a certain way and there's the landscape of Paris, a photograph, but still, mm -hmm. and, and here's the man of your dreams. It, it, all, it all sort of came together before it, we had to actually, yeah. you know, that was, that was yeah. a big day. And those, yes, I remember, yeah. Those elements, I mean, those physical, mm -hmm. actual elements mm -hmm. really help a, a great deal. Yeah. Brad. Um, Fred Bell for uh, Huffington Post. Um, I, Stanley, I think I saw you at the uh, Beard Awards. Uh -huh. And um, I wondered, well, for the both of you, if you had some chef that could cook for you, or chefs that you'd like to make sure, you know, came over, you know, to your ideal kitchen, which I'm sure is just like Julia Child or whatever, and uh, and did cooking. Who would you have in mind, and what would you have cooked for you? Dan uh, Barber. Yeah, and what mm -hmm. would he make for Dan you? Dan Barber. Oh, anything that was fresh up there at Blue Hill, <laughs> Stone Barns. <laughs> And, yeah. and you, Stanley, do you, uh, you have anyone in mind? And because you met everybody there, so you, you could have picked out anyone. Uh, uh, my grandmother, yeah. but she wasn't, she wasn't there. <laughs> uh, uh, she, was a, she was an extraordinary cook. Uh, there that night, uh, there were so many of them, but I, you know, Mario Batali, I think. Oh, Mario. In, in, in a lot of ways, yeah, Mario. And did you do your own Julia invitation? No, I never did, no, no. <laughs> I would have been fired. <laughs> Hi, uh, I have a question for both of you. Alyssa Stieglitz with uh, 1010 Wins and CBS Radio. Um, Julia Child went through many different challenges, starting out from not being accepted by the French cooks, and also it took her a while to get her book published, as we saw throughout the film. As starting out as actors, what were some of the challenges that you both went through? Starting out as actors? You mean uh, when we started in our working on this film, or no, you mean no, at the no, beginning no, of sorry. of our? Clear. Um, in general, like you know, when you start out with your acting career, right? You know, when you, you know, out in the field. What, cha oh, what I challenges? See. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Well, my my challenge was committing <laughs> to acting and thinking it was a serious enough thing to do with my life, you know. What are you going to do with your one wild life? And I just, I didn't think it was, I don't know. I thought it was sort of uh, silly and vain acting, even though it was the m most fun thing that I've ever done. And it remains being that. Ergo, it can't be good for me or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it was, it was just deciding to be, I remember, I remember thinking okay. the first time that I really, when somebody said, well, what do you do? And I said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an actor, you know? <laughs> and then I had committed, I realized, but it was, took a long time. Yeah. I, I, I took it too seriously at first. And it, was, it took me a long time to understand that you have to, you have to be serious about what you, you do, but you mustn't take yourself seriously. And that way you'll be, you, 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 you'll be happier, and ultimately you'll be more successful. You'll be better at what, at what you do. Um, but uh, I think the challenges for me at the beginning were, it, it was much easier after I lost my hair, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> I, I started to work constantly mm. and once I went. So I'm thinking of losing the hair on my whole body. And then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll just, I'll never stop. <laughs> It's just a disgusting thought. And I don't know why, I said it. why you said that, right. it's going to be repeated endlessly right. in yeah. the blogosphere and come back to haunt you yeah. in the yeah. next yeah. film and the next yeah. film. Really bad, yeah. Oh, God. Fran. 
Uh, hi, uh, Prairie Miller from WBAI Radio. This question is for Merrill. Uh, how was it important to you that this film includes the impact of McCarthyism at that time and on this couple? Um, well, I, I, I think it's really hard for us now to imagine the kind of terror that a lot of people lived under, where your entire livelihood could be taken away. I just saw a documentary that's going to be aired next year on for American Masters about Joe Papp. And it's uh, about the early days that he actually went to Los Angeles and worked in a, a school there. With, he was in the same class with Marilyn Monroe and all these various, all these really wonderful, wonderful actors. Um, and he was a socialist. I mean, he was uh, actually, I think he was a member of the Communist Party at some time. But he had to, but at that, you know, it was just, anyway, people's lives were ruined within a year. Within one year, that blacklist was a done deal and it, it was over. It was over. Betsy Rice, Carol Rice's wife, mm -hmm. had to move to England and never worked in this country, Waldo Salt, so many, so many people. Um, I don't think we have any sense of it now, how um, an association in a f so-called free country could uh, prevent you from making a living ever. And that happened then. And particularly in, in, in a, I, I think in a business where it was also very hard to make a living a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you had every, everything was working against you mm -hmm. in a way. There are so many mysteries in Julia and Paul Child's story, really, now that we know what we know about the OSS and um, their involvement in some kind of uh, espionage for the CIA or whatever, you, the early precursor to the CIA, to know really what what it was that would I would like to, if you want to know, the question was, what would I like to know? I'd like to know. What, what did they do? <laughs> yeah, and uh, how, did they, how did she write this 700-page cookbook in between collecting secrets from the she Soviets or whatever Hoover. it was she did? J. Edgar Hoover actually wrote the book. She, <laughs> she didn't. 